again, uh, just a, a welcome once again to our series on uh, dress reform. And uh, I'm glad this is uh, the second presentation. Now we are going to deal with uh, the reform in dress. Uh, in the first uh, presentation, I looked at um, the dress question or a question on dress. And uh, this moment, I'd like to dwell into dress reform. Otherwise, I pray that uh, the materials uh, reform in dress, I, I pray that uh, the materials on reform in dress will help us. We do not want only to change in the outside, but uh, we want the change in the outside to be uh, what the heart is experiencing. So a change in heart uh, should uh, bring forth the outside reformation. Uh, this is uh, Sammy Wilberforce with uh, the Gospel Sound as Rekindling Reformation, and I'd like us to offer a thanksgiving prayer before uh, we continue. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for the good weather and thank you for uh, a nice, humble time for our presentation. I do pray that uh, the testimonies may speak to our hearts and we may not uh, rebel against them, but uh, walk according to thy will. In Jesus' name, amen. And so welcome once again in this uh, presentation. And uh, as I gave a, a disclaimer that uh, Sister White talks about um, us uh, not uh, persisting on this issue of uh, uh, dress reform, but uh, speak about the love of Jesus and then uh, we shall be able when... Uh, a heart has been changed, the outside will automatically change. But uh, it seems that people never learn. They have a profession of faith, but uh, there is nothing coming on. Another issue is that uh, there are people who have never had such a materials presented to them. And so it is not a matter of uh, condemnation, but information. Because in the Bible, we are told that my people perish because they lack knowledge. And so I'll go straight away into the presentation of today. Uh, reform in dress, and today I'll just be reading along a chapter in the Testimonies, Volume 1. This is number 11, Testimony for the Church, and it is chapter 83, Reform in Dress. And so I won't have so much to speak about uh, of myself, but uh, the testimonies shall speak for themselves. We are told, Dear Brethren and sisters, my apology for calling your attention again to the subject of dress is that some do not seem to understand what I have before written. And so she apologizes for calling the attention to the issue of dress because she had said that we shouldn't be hammering these things about dress to the people. But because people do not understand or know what she had written before, then she has to bring to their attention this. And so... Uh, my apology for calling your attention again to the subject of dress is that some do not seem to understand what I have before written. And uh, an effort is made, perhaps by those who do not wish to believe what I have written, to make confusion in our churches upon this important subject. Many letters have been written to me stating uh, difficulties which I have not had time to answer. And now, to answer the many inquiries, I give the following statements, which it is hoped will forever put the subject at rest so far as my testimonies are concerned. And so there are people among us who were making confusion in the churches upon this important subject. Confusion, and uh, allow me, confusion, uh, and she calls this uh, uh, and upon this important subject. How important is this subject, by the way? How important uh, is um, uh, this uh, subject? Uh, I'd like just you to see something. Uh, how important uh, 
this subject is. In the issue of uh, dress, uh, this is how important it is. She says, fashion is uh, deteriorating the intellect and eating out the spirituality of our people. Obedience to fashion is pervading our Seventh-day Adventist churches and is doing more than any other power to separate our people from God. I have been shown that our church rules are very deficient. All exhibition, exhibitions of pride in dress, which is forbidden in the word of God, should be sufficient reason for church discipline. If there is a continuance in face of warnings and appeals and entreaties, to still follow the perverse will, it may be regarded as a proof that the heart is in no way assimilated to Christ. Self and only self is the object of adoration, and one such a professed um, uh, Christian will lead many away from God. 46.47.2 There is a terrible sin upon us as a people that we have permitted our church members to dress in a manner inconsistent with their faith. We must arise at once and close the door. That is uh, church discipline against the allurements of fashion. Unless we do this, our churches will become demoralized. And that is why she said that the issue of dress is a very important question. She again says that um, in uh, Revealed Herald, June 2, 1891, paragraph 8, great neglect has been shown in the matter of bringing our church members up to the standard of the Bible in this matter, dress reform. After admonition, after time for Bible study and reflection, those who are walking contrary to the scriptures and will not reform should be suspended from the church. The church is weakened, her power is enfeebled, her influence is limited because church members fail to live in accordance with the directions of the Bible. The example of those who follow the passions of the world has disastrous effect upon other members of um. Uh, sorry, the example of those who follow the fashions of the world has a disastrous effect upon other members of the church. Many seek to imitate the dress of those who go into extravagance on this matter. Those who cannot afford to make the display feel that the contrast between their simplicity and the fashion of their sisters is too sharply defined. In seeking to make the contrast less striking, they conform to the world and expand their little all they expend their little all on dress. They give time and effort to make an appearance which they consider more respectable and often sacrifice health, happiness, and the favor of God for the sake of dressing as do others who are not following the doctrines, directions of the word of God. Some of our sisters have been so sensitive over the contrast between their appearance and that of their more dressy sisters that they have refused to come to church on the Sabbath day. This is how important this issue is this is how important uh this issue is that uh, it has even made other sisters not to come to the church because of their fellow sisters who dress not who dress not according to the uh profession of uh, their faith and so uh when sister white says that uh, this is an important matter i believe she means it and i believe you too actually uh will think about uh, this uh, a important issue on grace uh, reform you will think about um, this important issue so uh we are told that uh, we must close up we must close up the door for fashion and uh, many people will wonder that E.G. White had to say that church discipline or suspension from the church should be given to those uh, who actually uh, are not up to, to dress reform. And so continuing on on this uh, uh, testimonies to the church, This is uh, the issue on uh, dress reform. Number 11, reforming dress. 
we are told some contend that what I wrote in testimony for the church number 10 does not agree with my testimony in the work entitled How to Live. They were written from the same view, hence are not two views, one contradicting the other, as some may imagine. If there is any difference, it is simply in the form of expression. In testimony for the church number 10, I stated as follows. Uh, what I wanted us to know that this is an important subject and we have been told that uh, church discipline or suspension should be given to those who after being laboring with them they cannot reform in these things because they do not uh, 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 represent the faith they believe it, they profess uh, to others and even others have stopped coming to the church because of these people who say that um, they are seventh day adventist while in their mannerism of grace it does not present uh, represent the faith so in testimony for the church number 10, I stated as follows. No occasion should be given to unbelievers to reproach our faith. We are considered old and singular and should not take a course to lead unbelievers to think us more so than our faith requires us to be. Some who believe the truth may think that it would be more helpful for the sisters to adopt the American costumes and, costume. And uh, I'll be talking about the American costume because there is the issue of wearing pants. Uh, when I'll be dealing with Deuteronomy 22 verse 5, I'll deal with this issue of uh, American costume. So some who believe the truth may think that it will be more helpful for the sisters to adopt the American costume. Yet, if that mode of grace will cripple our influence among unbelievers so that we could not so readily gain access to them, we should by no means adopt it, though we suffered much in consequence. But some are deceived in thinking there is so much benefit to be received from this costume. While it may prove a benefit to some, it is injury to others. It is injury to others. Now, some it is good, some it is an injury to others. So how do you balance, balance out things if something is good for others, but it's bad uh, for it is good for others and uh, to some it is bad uh, this is what um, the bible actually tells us that um, is it in romans chapter uh, 14 i'll go to romans chapter 14 if you will and um, this is um, romans just borrowing a principle here, Romans chapter 14, and uh, downwards. We are told, from verse 13, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. I know and uh, unclean, yes, but if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walketh thou not charitable, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So, uh, for, for meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it's an evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made with. And so, um, we, we don't live for ourselves, but uh, we live for others. And so if something will cause, even as we saw that some sisters were not coming to the church because of how others were dressing, how does it benefit them for you to enjoy the privilege of the house of God and then they have gone and uh, they are not coming back? It were, uh, As Paul even says that uh, I become everything to for everyone. So if anything will make your brother or sister stumble, think about their, their salvation rather than thinking about um, yourself. 
And so some see that the American costume is good, some see that it's an injury. Uh, continued on, I saw that uh, God's order has been reversed and his special direction disregarded by those who adopt the American costume. I was referred to Deuteronomy 22.5. And uh, this is where I shall be speaking about the pants and the American costumes. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Uh, God will not have his people adopt the so-called reformed dress. It is a modest apparel, holy and fitted for the modest, humble followers of Christ. There is an increasing tendency to have women in their dress and appearing as near like the other sex as possible and to fashion their dress very much like that of men, but God pronounce it abomination. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness, and sobriety. 1 Timothy 2 9. Those who feel called out to join the movement in favor of women, women's rights, and the so called dress reform might as well sever all connection with the third angel's message. Very, very strong words. Very strong words here that uh, we are being told. If um, your main objective is uh, to join the fashions of this world, you may as well live alone the third angel's message. The spirit which attends to one cannot be in harmony with the other. The scripture are playing upon the relations and rights of men and women. Spiritualists have, to quite an extent, adopted this singular mode of dress. Seventh-day Adventists who believe in the restoration of the gifts are often branded as spiritualists. Let them adopt this costume and their influence is dead. The people who will place them on a level with the spiritualist and will refuse to listen to them. With uh, the so-called dress reform, there goes a spirit of levity and boldness just in keeping with the dress. Modest and reserved seem to depart from many as they adopt that style of dress. I, ha I was shown that God will have us to take a course consistent and explainable. Let the sisters adopt the American costume and they will destroy their influence and that of their husband. So this is not just an issue about church, but also in adopting the American costume where actually women dress as close like us men, then they will destroy even their own influence and that of their husband because it is a uh, a confusion, who is the husband and who is the wife at the end of the day. They will become a byword and a derision. Our Savior says, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. There is a great work for us to do in the world and God will not have us take a course to lessen or destroy our influence with the world. The foregoing was given me as a reproof to those who are inclined to adopt a style of dress resembling that worn by men. But at the same time, I was shown the evils of the common style of woman's dress. And to correct this, also gave the following found in testimony for the church number 10. We do not think it in accordance with our faith to dress in the American costume, to wear hoops or to go to an extreme in wearing long dresses which sweep the sidewalks of the street. If uh, women would wear their dresses so as to clear the filth of the streets and injure too, their dresses will be modest. And they will and they could be kept clean much more easily and will wear longer. Such a dress will be in accordance with our faith. That is one inch or two uh, inch. Um, above the the ground so that they may not sweep uh, the uh, the filth of the street. I'll now give an extract from what I have elsewhere said upon this subject. Christians should not take pains to make themselves a gazing stock by dressing different from the world. So also this extremity that now we are Seventh-day Adventists and we have to be so different from the world, this is fanatism also. But if, when following out their conviction of duty in respect to dressing modestly and healthfully, they find themselves out of fashion, they should not change their dress in order to be like the world. So this is the balancing of the mother. Do not become a fanatic. Do not become a, an extremist. Wear your clothes according to the Bible direction. And whether 
it matches that of the world or whether it goes at all with that of the world, you have no business with it. But they should manifest a noble, independent and moral courage to be right. If all the world differ from them, if the world introduced a modest, if the world introduce a modest, convenient and helpful mode of grace, which is in accordance with the Bible, it will not change our relation to God or to the world to adopt such a, a style of dress. Very important also. Some people say that, oh, because it is has come first from the world and not from a Seventh-day Adventist, that, then we have nothing to do with it. But we are told that if it is in accordance with the Bible, then uh, there is no problem having it. Christians should follow Christ and make their dress conform to God's word. They should shun extremes. They should humbly pursue a straightforward course, irrespective of applause or of censure, and should cling to the right because of its own merits. Women should clothe their limbs with regard to health and comfort. Their feet and limbs need to be clad as warmly as men's. The length of the fashionable dress is objectionable for several reasons. So, um, the length of fashionable dress is objectionable for several reasons. One, it is extravagant and uh, unnecessary to have the dress of such a length that it will sweep the sidewalk and street. Number two, a dress thus long gathers dew from the grass and mud from the street and is therefore unclean. Number three, in, in it is bed, bed Ruggled condition, it comes in contact with the sensitive angles, which are not sufficiently protected and weakly chilling them, and thus endangering health and life. This is one of the greatest causes of uh, cata, catary and of uh, scrofulous swellings. Now, we were told that uh, the dress should be above the angles, a little bit above the angles, but the legs should be closed um, so that uh, they are not also exposed either by... Um, uh, a, a, a fund that can be tied down the angle or uh, the stockings that are warm enough. But this dress should not, while it is sweeping the ground and gathering the dew, be about the angle because it will cause health problem. This is one of the greatest causes of cattle and scrofulous swellings. Number four, the unnecessary length is an additional weight upon the hips and bowels. We are told that uh, um, our waist should be free from any weight that uh, will be um, uh, will um, will will be tight or uh, will will be detrimental to the veins that supply the the, the 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 blood. It hinders the walking and is also often in other people's way. And so those are the five reasons given. There there is still another style of dress, which is adopted by a class of so-called dress reformers. They imitate the opposite sex as nearly as possible. They wear the cap, the pants, the vest, the coat, and the boots, the last of which is the most sensible part of the costume. And when talking about these boots, we shall look at the American costume, how the boots were made, and how it was um, uh, uh, um, it was objectionable for a woman to wear it. Those who adopt and advocate this style of dress carry the so-called dress reform to very objectionable length. Confusion will be the result. Some who adopt this costume may be correct in their general views upon the health question, but they will be instrumental in accomplishing vastly more good if they did not carry the matter of dress to such extremes. In this style of dress, God's order has been reversed and his special direction disregarded. In Deuteronomy 22.5, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth. So this boot, they were meant for men and not for women. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. God will not have his people adopt this style of dress. It is... It is not modest apparel and is not at all fitting for modest, humble women who profess to be Christian Christ followers. God's prohibitions are lightly regarded by all who advocate doing away with the distinction of dress between males and females. 
The extreme position taken by some dress reformers upon this subject cripples their influence. God designed that uh, there should be a plain distinction between the dress of men and women and has considered the matter of sufficient importance to give explicit directions in regard to it. For the same dress worn by both sexes would cause confusion and great increase of crime. Were the apostle alive, and should he behold women professing goldness with this style of dress, he would utter rebuke, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in a modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair, or gold or pearls, or costly arrays, but which becometh women professing goldness with good works. And so we looked at this word shamefacedness with a little uh, reserved, with a little of shamefulness. To yourself, uh, uh, not to be so bold, I mean. And so the mass of professed Christians utterly disregard the teachings of the apostles and wear gold, pearls, and costly arrays. God's loyal people are the light of the world and the salt of the earth, and they should ever remember that their influence is of value. Were they to exchange the extreme long grace for the extreme short one, they would to a great extent destroy their influence. And believers whom it is their duty to benefit and seek to bring to the Lamb of God will be disgusted. Many improvements can be made in the dress of women in reference to health without making so great a change as to disgust the beholder. The form should not be compressed in the least with corsets and well bones. The dress should be perfectly easy that the lungs and the heart may have healthy action. That constricting of the lungs so that uh, actually they are reduced, they are tight so that the blood cannot uh, freely go through or um, uh, uh, there is no uh, uh, consistent circulation of the blood. Actually, we are told it brings a problem to the heart. The dress should somewhat be low the dress should reach somewhat below the top of the boot, but should be short enough to clear the filth of the sidewalk and street without being raised by the hand. A still shorter dress than this will be proper, convenient, and helpful for women when doing their housework, and especially for those who are obliged to perform more or less out-of-door uh, labor. With this style of dress, one light skirt or two at most is all that is necessary. And this should be buttoned on to a waist or suspended by straps. Many have taken the extreme of saying that the people should not wear skirts or people should not have uh, buttons on the skirt, but only suspenders uh, to the shoulders because uh, uh, they, they read the testimonies and they, they, they read them with the select, uh, selective amnesia. We are told the hips were not formed to bear heavy weights. The heavy skirts worn by some and allowed to drag down upon the hips have been the cause of various diseases which are not easily cured. And so this is about the heavy skirts. There we have light skirts which can be buttoned, and it's not a must. They must be suspended by strappers. Um, and so the issue of not having um, um, the skirt is based upon uh, the heavy skirts which uh, will constrict uh, the blood and which will... Uh, put uh, a burden on the hips and this is uh, an objectionable dress but a light skirt can have buttons on it and uh, it's not necessary that you have the suspenders so uh, the heavy skirts worn by some and allowed to drag down upon the hips have been the cause of various diseases which are not cured and we shall be seeing the the chart on uh, some kind of the diseases and uh, the side effects that bring upon those who wear these uh, tight and uh, heavy clothings uh, on the hip. The sufferers seem to be ignorant of the cause of their suffering and continue to violate the laws of their being by guarding their waist and wearing heavy skirts until they are made lifelong invalids. When told of their mistake, many will immediately exclaim, why such a style of dress will be old fashioned? What if it is? I wish we could be old fashioned in many respects. If we could have the old fashioned strength that characterized the old fashioned women of past generations, it will be very desirable. 
I do not speak unadvisedly, but I say that the way in which women clothe themselves together with their indulgence of appetite is the greatest cause of their present feeble, diseased condition. There is but one woman in a thousand, look at this, there is but one woman in a thousand who clothes her limbs as she should. Very interesting. One in a thousand. One in a thousand. It's a, a, I can't put a ratio on it, but it's too small. Uh, whatever may be the length of the dress, their limbs should be clothed as thoroughly as are the men's. This may be done by wearing linen pants. I'll go more into this later. Gathered into, uh, I'll be going through this in uh, part three of the presentation, the quality and what to choose for dressing. So this may be done by wearing linen pants gathered into a band and fastened upon the angle or made full and tap tapering at the bottom. And this should come down long enough to meet the shoe. So where your shoe ends, there is where your band ends. Uh, where a shoe ends is where actually the bottom of your pant ends or where it begins upward. But then your skirt or your dress should reach at the top of the angle a little bit. Uh, I hope uh, we are understanding each other. The limbs and angles thus clothed are protected against a current of air. If the feet and limbs are kept comfortable with warm clothing, the circulation will be equalized. And the blood will remain pure and healthy because it is not chilled or hindered in, in its natural passage through the system. The principal difficulty in the minds of many is in regard to the length of the dress. Some insist, insist that the top of the boot has reference to the top of such a boots are as usually worn by men, which reach nearly to the knee. So you, you have... Um, you have these boots that men wear, which are so long and they reach uh, uh, almost to the knee. And the women say, when Sister White say about wearing the cloth at the top of the boot, it means just below, a little bit below the knee. But she's saying, this is not what I say. Um, let us uh, read on. And uh, the boot of the man is not the boot of uh, the woman, by the way. And so the boot of the woman is so different from the boot of the man. And so when she says, at the boot, uh, she meant those um, uh, uh, not uh, long boots that men wear, but the short boots that women wear. So the principal difficulty in the minds of many is in regard to the length of the dress. Some insist that the top of the boot has reference to the top of such a boots are, as are usually worn by men, which reach nearly the knee. If it were the custom of women to wear such a boots, then these persons should not be blamed for professing to understand the matter as they have. But as women generally do not wear such a boots, these persons have no right to understand me as they have pretended. Because if um, the clothing of the woman reaches at uh, the top of the boot, th those boots like of those of th that we men wear, then it means when she sits, the other person on the other side, if they are facing each other, she is like she is naked to this person because the skirt now will be up on her knee instead of being at the bottom. That is how simply I can explain that. In order to show what I did mean and that there is a harmony in my testimonies on this subject, I'll here give an extract from my manuscript written about two years ago. Since the article on dress appeared in How to Live, there has been some a misunderstanding of the idea I wish to convey. They have taken the extreme meaning of that which I have written in regard to the length of the dress and have evidently had a very hard time over the matter. With their distorted views of the matter, they have discussed the question of shortening the dress until their spiritual vision has become so confused that they can only see men as trees walking. They have thought they could see a contradiction in my art congress recently published in How to Live and that art on the same subject contained in testimony for the church number 10. I must contend that I am the best judge of the things which I have been presented before me in vision and none need fear that I shall be, I shall by my life contradict my own testimony or what I shall fail to notice or that I shall fail to notice any real contradiction in the views given me. 
In my article on grace in how to live, I try to present a healthful, convenient, economical, yet modest and becoming style of grace for Christian women to wear, if they should choose to so to do. I tried perhaps imperfectly to describe such a dress. The dress should reach somewhat below the top of the boot. Now, um, just bear with me. I um I want just to show you some images on the the boot of the women, and uh, I'll give uh one uh just um want to show that now on uh, on my far right is the women's boot on my far right is the women's boot and she says that uh, the boot the the clothing of the women if you look at my far right on the screen you will see a boot with a star now this is just about uh, where the star is is just about where the ankle is and we are told that the dress of the woman in fact, let me just copy this image to PowerPoint and then uh, I can uh, illustrate this better. Uh, allow me to copy this to, uh, to my PowerPoint and then I can uh, illustrate uh, what I'm saying uh, the best. So fetching information, uh, snipping tool, and then uh, at least we can talk something that uh, we can see clearly. So I'll borrow this, and then uh, there in my PowerPoint, I'll expand like this. So now I'll share my PowerPoint so that uh, we may see what we are talking about. Now, this is this is uh, the women's boot. Let us take an example. This is the women's boot. And uh, she says that uh, I'll take a draw. She says that uh, the women's dress should come below a little at the bottom of the boat and uh, I'll, I'll take this is where she's talking about at, at this point there is the ankle of the woman's leg the dress should come a little bit at the bottom uh that that place now the men's boots the men's boot, let me fetch a figure for the men's boot. Men's boots. And uh, you will find that um, they are so different. Men's. I don't want to take the gum boot, so I'll just take um, the men's boot and uh, see what I have. So here I have my snipping tool. New. Good. And then I'll just duplicate. And... Uh, Okay, so I'll go back to the women's boot. This is the women's boot and this is um, the ankle. Yeah, so there, here is where the dress reaches. But when you go to the men's boot here, 
you can see where actually the men's boot reach. It's and the ankle is at this point. And so if the woman will wear her dress will be just a little bit at this point, and when she seated, she sits, her dress will come at this point, which will be a short, short, short dress. And so let us go back to what Sister White is saying here. In my article on dress in how to live, I tried to present a helpful, convenient, economical, yet modest and becoming style of dress for Christian women to wear. If they should choose so to do, I tried perhaps imperfectly to describe such a dress. The dress should reach somewhat below the top of the boot, somewhat below the top of the boot. And we are not talking about men's boot, but women's boot. So this is the woman's boot. She says, um, a little bit below where there is the angle. She said that this angle should not be covered. Mm? The angle should not be covered by the dress, the long dress, but uh, uh, the ankle should be covered by either the stockings or the pants, and then it should be strapped here. It should have something to strap here to keep the ankles actually but the dress should be a little bit somewhat uh, at this point at this point uh and uh, they will be healthy but it should not be like this that um, the woman's dress reaches here because we are told the pant inside should reach at this point and the dress should reach where actually at the top of the angle like this. So if it is at this point, this is the men's boot, not the women's boot. Again, that is enough. The dress should reach somewhat below the top of the boot, but should be short enough to clear the filth of the sidewalk and sweet without being raised by the hand. Some have contended that by the top of the boot, I meant the top of such a boots as men usually wear. So, uh, the others were saying that she meant at the top of the boot here, below the top of the boot. This is the boot of the man, and this is the top, and you can see the knee is here. And so when a woman seated, you have lost it. So let us have this differentiation clearly. So had I thought I should be misunderstood, I would have written more definitely. If it were the custom of women to wear high-topped boots like men, I could see sufficient excuse for this misunderstanding. I think the language is very plain as it now reads, and as I have shown in the images, and no one needs to be thrown into confusion. Please read again. The dress should reach somewhat below the top of the boot. The boot of the women, not men. Now look at the qualification, but should be short enough to clear the filth of the sidewalk and street without being raised by the hand, just above, a little bit above the ankle. A still shorter dress than this will be proper convenience and helpful for women who, for, for women when doing their housework and especially for those who are obliged to perform more or less out of the door. So a still more shorter dress, a still more shorter dress. Let us look at the still more shorter dress. This is the boots of the women. So the normal one reaches here. The normal ones, we are going up to here. But she says a little shorter, little shorter. You cannot take this at this place to be little shorter. From this point, from this point to this point is too high. From this two points. It's too high. So a little shorter, if the normal one is reaching here and here, a little shorter, maybe at this point or at this point or this point, we are talking at this point, and it is for those who are working maybe in the garden or who are working just outside. Let us read the testimonies again. A still shorter dress than this will be proper, convenient and helpful for women when doing their housework and especially for those who are obliged to perform more or less outdoor labor. Outdoor, not out of the compound or uh, in, the, in the offices. And so these things are so specific that you will never miss what she's saying. I can see no 
which no excuse for reasonable person's misunderstanding and perverting my meaning. In speaking of the length of the dress, had I referred to high topped boots reaching nearly to the ankle, high topped boots reaching nearly to the ankle. Again, we have just to repeat and repeat high boots nearly reaching at the ankle. And this is what we are talking about. Those are the boots of men. So, um, she says, I can see no excuse for reason of a person's misunderstanding and perverting my meaning. Um, in speaking of the length of the dress, had I referred to high-topped boots reaching nearly to the to the knee, I mean to the knee, nearly reaching to the knee, high boots reaching nearly to the knees. Again, I come, high boots nearly reaching at the knee. This is it, this is the knee. These are high boots nearly reaching to the knee. Hey, was she, if she were talking of the same, why should I have added, but the dress should be short enough to clear the filth of the sidewalk and street without being raised by the hand? If high-topped boots were mend, the dress would most certainly be short enough to keep clear of the filth of the street without being raised and will be sufficiently short for all working purposes. Reports have been circulated that Sister White wears the American costume and that this style of dress is generally adopted and worn by the sisters in Battle Creek. I am here reminded of the saying that a lie will go around the world while truth is putting on his boots. One sister gravely told me that she had received the idea that the American costume was to be adopted by the Sabbath keeping sisters. And that if some if such a style of dress should be enforced, she she will not submit to it for she never could bring her mind to wear such a, a dress. In regard to my wearing the short dress, and what is the short dress actually? Let us remind ourselves what is the short dress again. We go here. She says a little short, shorter dress, which means here where we, we saw that at this point, a little shorter dress because the normal one was reaching at this point. So she wears a little shorter dress. So. In regard to my wearing the short dress, I will say I have but one short dress, which is not more than a finger's length shorter than the dress I usually wear. So it is not a finger shorter than the normal dress. I have worn this short dress occasionally in the winter. Um, occasionally. In the winter, I rose early and putting on my short dress, which did not require to be raised by the hands to keep it from dragging in the snow. I walked briskly from one to two miles before breakfast. I have worn it several times to the office when obliged to walk through light snow or when it was very wet or muddy. Four or five sisters of the Battle Creek Church have prepared for themselves a short dress to wear while doing their washing and house cleaning. A short dress has not been worn in the streets of the city of Battle Creek and has never been worn to meeting. My views were calculated to correct the present fashion, the extreme long dress trailing upon the ground, and also to correct the extreme short dress reaching about the knees, which is worn by certain class. So a short dress reaching about the knees. Where are the knees? Here is almost where the knees is on this, uh, uh, on this picture. And she says that the shorter dress reaches somewhat here or what we were talking about at this point. So when you see it, your knees is, are not covered, but the dress have gone upward. So this is a shorter dress. All around this point, this is a shorter dress. And so she goes ahead to say, my views was calculated to correct the present fashion, the extreme long dress training upon the ground, and also to correct the extreme short dress reaching about the knees, which is worn by certain class. I was shown that we should shun both extremes. By wearing the dress reaching about to the top of a woman's gaiter boot, we, should, we shall escape the evils of the extreme long dress and shall also shun the evils and notoriety of the extreme short dress. As we come to a close, 
I'll advise those who prepare for themselves a short dress for working purposes to manifest taste and neatness in getting it up. Have it arranged in order to fit the form nicely. Women morphology and tight dresses is ex, uh, is um, forbidden. Even if it is a working dress, it should be made becoming and should be cut after pattern. Sisters, when about their work, should not put on clothing which will make them look like images to frighten the cross from the corn. It is more gratifying to their husbands and children to see them in becoming well-befitting utter that it can be to mere visitors or strangers. Now, when you are you are, you are you are making a choice of dress, there is some important element of this issue that comes in. And we are talking about Christian children and Christian husbands. It is more gratifying to their husbands and children to see them in becoming well-fitting utter than it can be mere vis than it can be to mere visitors or strangers. Strangers and visitors will be comfortable with anything because their purposes of visiting their your home and their natural inclination and all that stuff, it may be well with them even if you are without dress. But to the husband and to the children, it is more gratifying to see you in a befitting dress. So also when buying clothes, think about your children, think about your husband. Some wives and mothers seem to think it is no matter it is no matter how they look when about their work and when they are seen only by their husbands and children, but they are very particular to dress in taste for the eyes of those who have no special claims upon them. So other women wear for the visitors and they will never wear for their children and for their husbands. The first priority of a woman when putting on a cloth is their children and the husband, not the visitors and strangers. Is it... Is not the esteem and love of husband and children more to be prized than that of strangers and friends? Because your friends may not be even Christians and they may care less of what you are dressing or they may induce you to wear something that is not good for the children and the husband. The happiness of husband and children should be more sacred to every wife and mother than that of all others. Christian sisters should not at any time dress extravagantly, but should at all times dress as neatly, modestly, and healthfully as their work will allow. So uh, I highlight this statement once again and uh, also highlight it in your notes or in your step so that uh, it may capture um, it may capture your eyes uh, when you are reading and revisiting the notes. The above described dress was we believe to be worthy of the name of the reform of the reform short dress. It is being adopted at the Western Health Reform Institute and by some of the sisters at Battle Creek and uh, other places where the matter is properly set before the people. In wide contrast with this modest dress is the core is the so-called American costume, resembling very nearly the dress worn by men. It consists of a vest pants and a dress resembling a coat and reaching about halfway from the hip to the knee. We shall go through the American costume uh, in the subsequent uh, uh, presentation. Uh, American costume. And uh, I, won't, I won't belabor on it so much, but uh, it was uh, a dress like uh, that of uh, men. It was like women were really looking like men in this um, attire. So uh, without mixing everything, I'll just go on. This dress I have opposed, this dress I have opposed from what has been shown me as in harmony with the word of God, while the other I have recommended as modest, comfortable, convenient, and healthful. Um, another reason which I offer as an apology for calling attention again to the subject of dress is that not one in 20 of the sisters who profess to believe the testimonies have taken the first step in the dress reform. It may be said that Sister White generally wears her dresses in public longer than the dress she recommends to others. To this I reply, when I visit a place to speak to the people where the subject is new and prejudice exists, I think it best to be careful and not close the ears of the, of the people by wearing a dress which would be objectionable to them. But after 
bringing the subject before them and fully explaining my position, I then appear before them in the reformed dress, illustrative of my teachings. As to the matter of wearing hoops, the reform in dress is entirely in advance of them. It, can, it cannot use them. And it is altogether too late to talk about wearing hoops, large or small. My position upon that question is precisely what it ever has been. And I hope not to be held responsible for what others may say on this subject or for the cause pursued by those who put on hoops. I protest against the perversion of my private conversations on this subject and ask that what I have written and published be regarded as my settled uh, position. And so there you have it, the issue on um, reform in dress as it appears in the testimonies. Uh, and I pray that um, this will be enough just stepping stone to start our walk towards the right way. Otherwise, may the Lord bless us and uh, my prayers with is with all of us that in whatever way or in whatever guys the truth may come to our side, we may uh, accept it. And as he says that um, once a heart is converted, it will not have a controversy with other things because it will just respond to the voice of the Lord and uh, a person will live for Christ than living for herself. The, the problem we are having is um, selfishness and living for ourselves. But when we come to a point, we will consider how Christ feels in whatever thing that we do. Then we shall inquire of him more than inquiring of our appetite. And may the Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Dear Father, again, thank you. And uh, knowledge is power when it's used in the right way. And this is what we want to do. We want the power of the Holy Spirit to work in us and within us and around us and above everything that we do, that uh, we may not give allegiance to anything that will make uh, the devil claim us uh, his own in any way. And so thank you for uh, teaching us and thank you for the grace. Thank you for the sacrifice of your son and an atonement that is going on in the heavenly sanctuary for us to be cleansed our soul temple that we may be pure. Please write our names in the book of life and help us to be a light to others who are seeking of the same. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.